New report out from the National Fraternal Order of Police highlights uh, law enforcement officers shot and killed in the line of duty. I just want to go through this a little bit. Uh, interesting to see this. And, of course, uh, it's making all kinds of headlines. Uh, but if you go to the uh, National Fraternal Order of Police uh, website, you can see the report for yourself. Uh, and it talks about uh, 378 law enforcement officers shot in the line of duty. Uh, it also highlights 46 law enforcement officers killed by gunfire. And when you look at uh, some of the details here of uh, the numbers, over the past six years, uh, 2018, there were 237 shot uh, and 53 killed. In 2019, 293 shot with 50 killed. Uh, then in uh, 2020, uh, 312 shots, 47 killed. Uh, in 2021, 346 shots, 64 killed. In 2022, 331 shot, 62 killed. And then in last year, 378 officers shot, which clearly is a record over that of the 2021 year. Uh, however, those killed have come down quite a bit from uh, the peak of 64 in 2021, uh, but still 378 officers shot. So uh, you go through and you can see even the state by state numbers. And this is always fascinating to compare and contrast. You know, you gotta keep in mind as well. I mean, some states are more populated than others, uh, but uh, Illinois had 11. 11 officers shot in the line of duty uh, compared to some of the other states. We have Florida, 17. Georgia, there was 17. Texas had 39 officers shot in the line of duty. Uh, so obviously there's um, some, some interesting numbers you can glean from all of this uh, when you're uh, looking at this yourself. Uh, and I would imagine that... Uh, uh, this strikes close to home for, for those in law enforcement that uh, uh, across the country uh, deal with really, really just uh, tough times. But uh, the report also delves into the nature of the attacks uh, and ambush style attacks. Uh, also, uh, you know, growing concerns uh, that uh, that various uh, federal agencies put out uh, about, uh, you know, the, the mindset and behavior of uh, some assailants. Uh, and a variety of other things. So it says, uh, in most cases, officers are able to quickly assess situations, recognize threats, and take adequate defensive actions. Tragically, not every threat can be seen or mitigated. Perhaps most troubling and worrisome are ambush style or other calculated attacks on law enforcement. So again, the National uh, um, Fraternal Order of Police uh, highlighting all of these and even going through uh, the law enforcement officers that were killed by gunfire. Uh, and uh, they have a, just an overview of all of the different uh, officers and looks like, uh, you know, Pennsylvania, California, uh, Wisconsin seems to be going in uh, uh, chronological order here. Uh, police officer um, Vasquez Lasso. All right, that was here in Illinois back on March 1st. Uh, so that was uh, the Chicago Police Department. Uh, and remember uh, reporting on that and all of the, uh, the, the just heartache there was. And we also had uh, police officer uh, Preston up in Chicago on May 6th that was killed uh, in, the, in the line of duty. So uh, even more, you know, goes through just page after page here of uh, the officers that were shot and killed. Uh, and uh, two of them there from Illinois. Just in our uh, brief review here of the uh, the latest from the Fraternal Order of Police. Uh, but uh, clearly it's uh, the officers shot and killed are uh, across the country. Uh, so I wanted to just uh, touch base on that heading into the weekend because uh, I, I know it's a concern for a lot of people out there and how uh, law enforcement are treated, uh, and, and especially in a state like Illinois. We've heard from um, the police leadership uh, from Chicago to you know the, the uh, fraternal order of police uh, across the state and even you know the police chiefs and such and the sheriffs uh, and all of the concern there is about the Safety Act and the Pretrial Fairness Act and how criminal justice is uh, offered to you know those who are accused of crimes, but there's a lot of heavy enforcements against law enforcement, uh, and law enforcement clearly have uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of obstacles to to tackle including having to wade through enforcing laws that they may disagree with. Uh, but as you see, um, you've got, uh, even with the Illinois gun and magazine ban, you've got law enforcement taking different approaches in how they, uh, uh, they deal with things, especially law enforcement that are locally elected like sheriffs. And sheriffs 
being uh, elected by the people. Uh, they, they've uh, across the state have, have said they're not going to enforce this law or they're not going to make it a priority. Uh, but clearly it uh, still puts them in a uh, odd position. So uh, nothing that I envy. And I, uh, I think that uh, the work they do is, is pretty incredible, dangerous, uh, and especially in these times where you've got uh, a whole host of things that uh, that can really break bad. Uh, so just wanted to touch base on that briefly here with Bishop on air. Uh, we've got a few more things to tackle, including presidential electors. So stay tuned. That's coming up here next. I'm Greg Bishop. Follow me anywhere. Just search Bishop on air. Hey.